Welcome Age of Vintage Society. Orson Welles is regarded as one of the few universal film artists and a central figure of the 20th century. Orson Welles's 30th of October 1938 radio adaptation of The War of the Worlds caused mass hysteria, convincing thousands of panicked listeners across North America that Earth was being attacked by Mars. How did Orson Welles's The War of the Worlds cause a nationwide panic? Make sure to watch the video until the end and leave your thoughts in the comments. If you are new here, join our wonderful community by subscribing to the Age of Vintage channel. The Orson Welles War of the Worlds Scandal and the Invasion from Mars Orson Welles, a man whose career veered dizzily between media and cultures, between the old and the new world, a figure who never managed to match his early success, who invested his extraordinary talent impatiently in ever-changing genres, who was frequently involved in scandal as an actor, and who ended his career as eminence grise and entertainer. Prodigiously productive, charming in his encounters with the rich and beautiful, Orson Welles was nonetheless a man of failed projects and aborted dreams. Misunderstood genius, superstar, Hollywood's fallen angel, Orson Welles left his indelible mark on the 20th century. Yet how to talk about Welles without falling into overstatement and excess? Perhaps best known for writing, directing and starring in what is generally referred to as the greatest film of all time, Orson Welles is no slouch when it comes to lifetime achievements. Even if the good old days never existed, the fact that we can conceive such a world is, in fact, an affirmation of the human spirit. Orson Welles was born May 6, 1915, Kenosha, Wisconsin. American motion picture actor, director, producer and writer, his innovative narrative techniques and use of photography dramatic lighting and music to further the dramatic line and to create mood made his Citizen Kane, which he wrote, directed, produced and acted in, one of the most influential films in the history of the art. Wells was born to a mother, Beatrice Ives, who was a concert pianist and a crack rifle shot, and a father, Richard Wells, who was an inventor and a businessman. Wells was a child prodigy, adept at the piano and violin, acting, drawing, painting and writing verse. He also entertained his friends by performing magic tricks and staging many productions of William Shakespeare's plays. Through his father, an inventor who'd made a fortune inventing a carbide lamp for bicycles, Wells met actors and sportsmen, but his childhood was far from easy. Wells' parents separated when he was four, and Beatrice died from jaundice when he was nine. When his father's successful business began to falter, he turned to the bottle. He died when Orson was 13. The Houseman-Wells partnership proved to be an important one. In 1937, the 21-year-old Wells, fresh off directing an all-black cast, in a version of Macbeth, teamed up with Houseman to form the Mercury Theatre. Its first production, an adaptation of Julius Caesar in contemporary dress and with tones of German-occupied Italy, was a huge success. Several more acclaimed stage productions followed before the Mercury moved into radio and began producing a weekly programme, the Mercury Theatre on the Air, which ran on CBS from 1938 to 1940 and again in 1946. Critical praise was heaped upon the series soon after the programme launched, but ratings were low. All that changed on October 30th, 1938, when Wells aired his adaptation of H.G. Wells's novel The War of the Worlds. The programme simulated a news broadcast and Wells, as its narrator, described in breathless detail the alien invasion and attack on New Jersey. The programme included news reports and eyewitness accounts and sounded so real that listeners panicked over what they perceived to be a real event. When the truth came out, duped believers were outraged. Citizens of the Nation 
I shall not try to conceal the gravity of the situation that confronts the country. The ability to confuse audiences en masse may have first become obvious as a result of one of the most infamous mistakes in history. It happened the day before Halloween, on October 30, 1938, when millions of Americans tuned in to a popular radio program that featured plays directed by and often starring Orson Welles. The performance that evening was an adaptation of the science fiction novel The War of the Worlds, about a Martian invasion of the Earth. As the drama unfolded, performers posing as witnesses described unidentified flying objects, UFOs, and strange creatures firing a futuristic heat ray that had killed dozens of people. Orson Welles and his colleagues scrambled to pull together the show. They ended up writing pop culture history. Though the program was peppered with reminders that it was theatrical, many people who tuned in thought that the alien invasion was real, and breathless newspaper headlines later described widespread panic caused by the prospect of an alien invasion. Thousands of listeners rushed from their homes in New York and New Jersey, many with towels across their faces to protect themselves from the gas which the invader was supposed to be spewing forth, the Daily News reported the next day. In New York City, people fled apartment buildings and ran into the streets, looking into the sky. In Pittsburgh, a man stopped his wife from drinking a bottle of poison while she was yelling, I would rather die this way than that. Men and women apparently lost their heads completely and besieged WFBLs and the journal's offices with telephone calls. The journal received 200 that night. Please, please, one woman begged to a reporter, tell me that it isn't true, that not all of New Jersey has been destroyed. My family is there. Some listeners, especially those who had missed any one of the four disclaimers warning the audience that the broadcast was a dramatisation of the H.G. Wells novel of the same name, were panicked that we're listening to real news about an attack on Earth from outer space. But in adapting the book for a radio play, Wells made an important change. Under his direction, the play was written and performed so it would sound like a news broadcast about an invasion from Mars a technique that, presumably, was intended to heighten the dramatic effect. But did the newspapers of the time manipulate the panic and create a myth? A wave of mass hysteria seized thousands of radio listeners between 8.15 and 9.30 o'clock last night when a broadcast of a dramatisation of H.G. Wells's fantasy, The War of the Worlds, led thousands to believe that an interplanetary conflict had started, with invading Martians spreading wide death and destruction in New Jersey and New York. This time, at least a score of adults required medical treatment for shock and hysteria. In Newark, in a single block at Hedden Terrace and Hawthorne Avenue, more than 20 families rushed out of their houses with wet handkerchiefs and towels over their faces to flee from what they believed was to be a gas raid. Some began moving household furniture. The broadcast was legendary overnight for supposedly having been too realistic and frightening for its audience. Morning papers from coast to coast revelled in the mass hysteria it had caused. Even while drawing the ire of some of his listeners, the broadcast cemented Wells' status as a genius, and his talents quickly became a fascination for Hollywood. In 1940, Wells signed a $225,000 contract with RKO to write, direct and produce two films. The deal gave the young filmmaker total creative control, as well as a percentage of the profits and at the time was the most lucrative deal ever made with an unproven filmmaker. Wells was just 24 years old. Success wasn't immediate. Wells started and then stopped an attempt at adapting Joseph Conrad's Heart of Darkness for the big screen. The daring behind that project paled in comparison to what became Wells's actual debut film, Citizen Kane. Modelled after the life and work of publishing magnate William Randolph Hearst, the film told the story of newspaperman Charles Foster Kane, played by Wells, 
tracing his rise to power and his eventual corruption from that power. The film outraged Hearst, who refused to allow mention of the movie in any of his newspapers and helped drive down the film's disappointing box office numbers. Wells' second film for RKO, The Magnificent Ambersons, was a far more straightforward project and one that helped send Wells running from Hollywood. Toward the end of its filming, Wells made a quick trip to Rio de Janeiro to do a documentary. When he returned, he discovered that RKO had made its own edit of the film's ending. Wells, who disowned the movie, raged. A bitter public relations spat between the filmmaker and RKO ensued, and Wells, successfully cast by RKO as difficult to work with and with no appreciation for budgets, never truly recovered. For several years, Wells stuck around Hollywood. He married love goddess Rita Hayworth in 1943 and starred in an adaptation of Jane Eyre that debuted in the United States the following February. Wells then directed The Stranger and Macbeth, but he wasn't long for California. The same year he made Macbeth, he divorced Hayworth and began what amounted to a ten-year self-imposed exile from Hollywood. Hard times plagued Wells throughout much of the 1970s. Health issues dominated his life, many of them brought on by his growing obesity. The filmmaker topped £400 at one point. The last decade of his life saw Wells continuing to stay busy. Among his many projects, he served as the spokesman for Paul Masson Wine, appeared on the TV series Moonlighting and made a documentary called Filming Othello about the making of his 1952 film. Toward the end of his life, Wells and Hollywood seemed to have made up. In 1975, he received the Lifetime Achievement Award of the American Film Institute, and in 1985, he was awarded the Directors Guild of America's D.W. Griffith Award, the organization's highest honor. He did his last interview on October 10, 1985, just two hours before his death when he appeared on the Merv Griffin Show. Not long after returning to his Los Angeles home, he suffered a heart attack and died. Wells said with an oh-so-serious expression and spoke in sincere, thoughtful tones, I know that almost everybody in radio would do almost anything to avert the kind of thing that has happened, myself included, Wells said. Radio is new and we are learning about the effect it has on people we learned a terrible lesson. Thanks to decades of space research, understanding of extraterrestrial life has come a long way since Wells's radio play, and it's generally understood that Mars isn't home to an advanced alien civilization with lethal weaponry and spacecraft. Public fascination with extraterrestrials still runs high, However, a modern announcement about alien creatures would likely spur a very different response today than The War of the Worlds did in 1938. Contrary to common nomenclature, Wells's War of the Worlds broadcast was not a hoax sprung on an unsuspecting audience. Rather, the show was a regularly scheduled and announced episode of the Mercury Theatre on the Air, a radio programme dedicated to presenting dramatizations of literary works. If you liked this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you are new here, and if you want to support my work, please visit my Patreon page. Now it is your turn. What do you think about the hysteria that Orson Welles made with his radio broadcasting? It is unbelievable how gullible and manipulable humans can be.